Hello, my name is Carolina Coelho and I am a scientist. I am working as a lecturer in the University of Exeter. Let me tell you the tale of a deadly fungus and also the tale of how I became a scientist. When I was in middle or high school, I realized that microbes are really fascinating and I'm showing you here, this is a tree of life. It represents all of the living organisms that we have. And as you can see, I highlighted here, most of the organisms that exist today on earth are actually microbes. And microbes are the reason we have beer and bread and wine and cheese. But microbes are also the reason why we wash and package our food very carefully, why we refrigerate, freeze our food, why we wash our hands, etc., etc. And we do all of these things to prevent infectious diseases caused by microbes. When we look at diseases as the Black Plague, at HIV, AIDS, and now COVID, for example, it is evidenced is it, it is evident we can't underestimate tiny organisms, microbes. They are mostly our friends, but they can also be our foes. After all, here we are, big humans with fancy cars, planes and rockets and computers and iPads, and we can still get very, very sick from these tiny organisms, seemingly much simpler than us. So this is why very early on, I was fascinated with microbiology and mostly with infectious diseases. So I am originally from Porto in Portugal, and I did my um, high school there. And when I chose my degree in college, because I was already fascinated with microbes, I chose a degree with a lot of health and with a lot of microbiology so I could study infectious diseases. This ended up being a pharmacy degree, but it could have been microbiology or biochemistry. And during my degree, I worked as much as I could in the laboratory with a voluntary internship because I knew I wanted to do science and because I knew I needed to gain experience in how to do science. And these voluntary internships during my degree in the laboratory were very important because the experience I gained and the reference letters and the context that I gained there helped me get all the jobs that I got afterwards and all the opportunities that I had afterwards. And of course, there was good luck and mentors and good timing, but you have to be in the lab to have the opportunity. So if you can, you, you should. I, I really think this was an important opportunity for me. So I took my first job after I finished my degree working as a research technician in the University of Coimbra, which is just south from Porto. And this is actually the eighth oldest university in the world. And when I was there in my first research assistant job, I heard about this fellowship. And because I had experience, I interviewed for this fellowship and I got this fellowship. And uh, that gave me the opportunity of moving to the USA, to New York City, to the Bronx for five years, and then to Baltimore for four years. And it was during this move to New York that I really started to study fungi. And what are fungi? As you can see here, fungi can be microbes, and we mostly associate them with um, mushrooms. And sometimes we call them fungi, sometimes we call them fungi. But did you know that um, some fungi could be microscopic? And did you know that some fungi can cause athlete's food, thrush, and other nail and skin infections? And in addition to causing these skin and superficial diseases, fungi can also cause invasive diseases and they can kill people. So the deadliest fungus that I study, that I started studying in New York, is the villain in our story. And if we look at it in the, under the microscope, it's very round cells, very pretty, and sometimes with certain stainings in the microscope, it has a halo around it. And these are pictures that I took during my studies. And this particular fungus is called Cryptococcus neoformans. And it's actually a close relative of Boletus mushrooms, which we know as penny buns or sep or porcini in Italy. So this Cryptococcus neoformans seems like a complicated name, but it's not. Crypto means cryptic shape because it was a new, a novel organism of unknown origin. And coccus is the Greek word for round, so it means it was a cryptic uh, round shape. And neoformance just really means new shape in Latin, so it just really highlights this, this idea of this new bug that was identified. Um, but cryptococcus, so I've said that cryptococcus is very similar to Boletus mushrooms, but it is microscopic, and it has this really, really photogenic round shape in the microscope.
And what does Cryptococcus, this really pr pretty round fungus, do? Actually, Cryptococcus kills 180,000 people each year, and it's responsible for 15% of AIDS-associated deaths. These are a lot of people. And how can this happen? In the 1980s, a deadly epidemic emerged, and this was the HIV AIDS epidemic. And when this epidemic emerged, Cryptococcus started killing people. The people suffering from HIV and AIDS started dying from Cryptococcus. Because what happens when you have AIDS is that your immune system stops working and your immune system is the one that defends you from microbes. And when your immune st system st stops working, then Cryptococcus is very, very deadly. And everyone that has a problem in their immune system is at risk for cryptococcal disease. For example, people who receive transplants are also very much at risk for cryptococcus neoformans. And we now know that animals can get sick too. So horses, koalas, cats, and dogs, they can get cryptococcus, and even dolphins can die from cryptococcus disease. So what happens with cryptococcus, this deadly fungus? Cryptococcus exists in the environment. It's a fungus that exists in the environment. Once in a while, we inhale its spores and actually... The majority of us have come in contact with cryptococcus. About four out of five in us have cryptococcus already inside us. We breathe it in and it stays in our lungs. And if we are healthy, we are fine and we don't have a problem with cryptococcus. And it is when our immune system is depleted, it's suppressed, such as AIDS and transplant, that cryptococcus starts to grow. And when cryptococcus grows, it can cause uh, an infection in the lung, which is a pneumonia. That's the clinical term, the medical term for an infection in the lung. But it can also travel to the brain. And in the brain, it's going to cause what we call in medicine, meningoencephalitis, which is an inflammation of your brain. And I'll show you really dramatic images of what it causes. So this round caucus that we see under the microscope, once it gets into a normal brain, and you can see here in the middle image that a normal brain is very symmetrical and gray, and you can see little ridges, which is our brain uh, folds. But when cryptococcus starts to grow, it becomes um, white and it starts pushing the brain and it really interferes with the brain function because there's so much growth inside. And in our brain, we are in big trouble because your brain is an organ that does not recover very well once it becomes damaged. So this is why cryptococcus is so dangerous and it ends up becoming deadly. So I really think about the infection by cryptococcus neoformans as a really big fight where your immune system is usually winning and it's fighting cryptococcus and it can keep us all healthy. And when your immune system is depleted, then cryptococcus starts to grow and we lose the, the fight. It really highlights how powerful microbes can be, how dangerous cryptococcus can be, but it also really highlights how your immune system is actually usually keeping you healthy and fighting all of these tiny invisible uh, threats that we uh, have. So I studied this during my PhD and my uh, postdoc and I'm really lucky that I get to do this work every day and continue to study this fight every day. I'm now a lecturer and I do my independent research and the University of Exeter really has top researchers in infectious diseases so it has been really a good place to continue my studies. I've been here since 2019 and now I'm taking students and really taking forward my research and of course teaching at the university. So what do I do on a daily basis? Besides teaching at the university, I do a lot of microscopy. For example, these are other images that I took during my studies in these special microscopes called electron microscope. And these are really powerful microscopes. And you can see here again, the round fungus and everything that you see inside are little pieces of the cell that is very well preserved. And here is just a different type of microscope and you can see the, the different fungus interacting with each other. I also do, I use drugs to kill the fungus and to study how it's uh, killed. And I do, I also work with DNA and I do what we call genetic manipulations in the laboratory to uh, delete a certain piece of DNA. It doesn't work anymore. 
and uh, then we can study how that is affecting the disease and how that is affecting the fitness and the survival of the fungus. So we call this genetic manipulation, gene deletion, knockouts, mutants. This is just a little bit of what I do every day in a laboratory. And with these images of my daily work, I end my tale of a deadly fungus and how I became a scientist.